Hello, in the last lecture we talked a lot about matrices um, and also vectors and how we represented those in NumPy. Um, in this lecture I'm going to talk about multiplying uh, either matrices or vectors together. And uh, it turns out there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, one kind of multiplication that we have is called element-wise multiplication. And, uh, and it's probably most similar to what most of you have seen unless you've taken a linear algebra course before. Um, I'm also going to be introducing um, a kind of multiplication called the dot product. And you can see I'm using a slightly different symbol down here. And, uh, and so it turns out these four different multiplications I'm doing between these different vectors um, all mean slightly different things and we need to learn how to interpret them and also learn um, what their use cases are when, I want, when would I want to do these kinds of multiplications. So I'm going to start with the top one, which is uh, element-wise um, multiplication. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about soon that I want you to notice is that these two are the same vectors, but I'm worried a little bit here about whether my vectors are vertical um, or horizontal. Okay, so here I am. I'm importing NumPy. I'm creating a NumPy array here, one, two, three. I'm creating a NumPy here, array here, four, five, six. And if I multiply them, I can do, do it like this, v1 times v2. And, uh, and you can see what I got here, right? It's basically doing, uh, you know, one times four. So I get, uh, you know, one times four. And then the next element is two times five. I get two times five. And the third one is three times six, since I'd have three times six here. Uh, and, uh, and so really, I mean, it's just pairing up the items and, and drawing one by one. Now, uh, as I said, uh, we are often going to worry about whether our vectors are horizontal um, or vertical, right? Vectors are inherently these one-dimensional things, and in a lot of math classes, we'll talk about it as one-dimensional, and then we'll say which angle it draws. Um, in, in Python, and NumPy in particular, the way we deal with this orientation of the vectors is we actually create two-dimensional um, tensors, and we just make sure that, well, there's either one column or um, or or there might be um, one uh, one row for horizontal, and, and so there's different ways I could do it. I mean, I could do something like this if I wanted to um, to create it vertically, and now you can see well this is a vertical vector, this is a hor horizontal vector. I mean, technically this is a matrix, but um, this is the way I would represent a lot of vectors um, if I was trying to translate from math into code. Um, now this is a pain, so that's not how a person would normally do it. Um, what we'll do instead is we'll do a reshape. So when I do the reshape, I can say how many rows do I want and how many columns do I want. And uh, in, in this case, I want one column and three rows, and I could do that, and I get the same result. Um, now, the really important part for this to be a vertical vector was that I have exactly one um, column. And, um, and so if I add more things here, right, like this wouldn't quite work because I'd have to change this this here as well. And so what people will typically do is they'll say uh, negative one. And, and just to remember, negative one means however many are needed, right? So that is a very common pattern you're gonna see. You're gonna say reshape negative one, one. That's basically a shorthand or kind of a, a, a pattern for saying, give me a vertical vector. Okay, so I have these two vertical vectors now. And uh, well, I'm gonna actually make this one vertical as well, uh, reshape. A negative one and one, and uh, and that's straight. And so then I'm if I multiply these again, it's still just lining them up bit by bit. Now um, what I cannot do is uh, well first off well what what matters here right I mean it matters what the shape of both of these are, right the they are both the same shape and when you have two things that are the same shape, you can do an element wise operation. What if I do something that's a different shape? What if I delete an item here? Um, it's going to complain. It's going to say operands cannot be broadcast together with these shapes, right? Three by one was the matrix of the first shape. Two by one was the matrix of the other shape. And so what is this broadcasting that it speaks of? Well, I already said that if they have the same shape, element-wise multiplication will work. And uh, there's certain cases where, um, where NumPy can basically stretch matrices to make it work, even there if they're even if they're different sizes, and, and it can't always do this, and it can't do it here. Uh, but there's a number of cases where we talk about where it can do it, and so somewhat surprisingly, if I actually um, simplify this a little bit more, if I just had this be a size one, and then I run this, 
well, then it would be working just fine. It What is it doing? Well, it, it's reusing this five, right? It's reusing it for this position, for this position, um, and for this position. And so if I look at the shape of these two, like this, basically what it's doing is it's saying that this part is fine, right? I mean, on this dimension, they both have one. And then when I'm trying to check for the first dimension, is it okay to match a three with whatever is down here? It's okay under two circumstances. It's okay if it's the same number. And, uh, and it's also okay if one of the numbers is one. Because if it's one, then Python realizes, oh, I can just stretch it out. I can repeat that one number um, a bunch of times. So, so really kind of what Python is doing is it's converting it to this for us automatically. And, uh, and you can see, well, that gives the exact same result. Okay, so let me clean this up a bit. Uh, oh, that was that was all fine, all right? So negative one, comma one. Um, one one of the things I can do with these vectors, if I like, oh, is that is that what I had? Uh, yeah, I think that's back to where I was. Let me just look at both of these now. Okay, that's all fine. Um, one of the things I can do is I can rotate these vectors back and forth, and the way I would do that is I'd say transpose. So dot capital T stands for transpose and transpose like that and it just flips the direction of it and you know if i wanted to if i transpose once i make it horizontal if i transpose again it's back to vertical um, so that's all fine so something that'll be interesting here is what if i do this so v1 um, dot transpose dot shape is a one by three and v2 dot shape is a three by one what is going to happen if I say v1 times v2, well, it's actually going to work. So I was trying to compare these two, and it's like, well, they don't match, but when I just have one, I can stretch it out. Again, up here, it's one and three, it doesn't match, but I can stretch the first one out. And so, so if I do this, I actually see, oh, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to multiply v1 transpose by v2. I, I see I'm actually able to do it. Uh, it's basically stretching them both out to three by threes. And uh, and then it's doing the um, it, it's doing the element wise multiplication. Let let me be very clear about what's happening here. So I have my v one dot transpose, and uh, basically what Python is doing is it's tiling this down three times. And and so I can actually show this with the np concatenate function, uh, which can take in a list of vectors, kind of like this, and it's basically repeating these three on top of each other like that so it's basically creating this and maybe i'll say well what this is is this is my v1 broadcast it is like that right because because when i multiply it by uh, v2 it wants three rows right so it's kind of stretching it out like that it doesn't actually do all of this computation but it does a logical equivalent so this is the way you should think of it not in terms of performance but in terms of what uh what result we get um, when I have v2, what it's doing there is it's tiling it from left to right because uh, when I look at this first piece, I'm like, well, I need three columns and I only have one here, so I better do do a repeat. So that would be kind of like this, np numpy.concatenate, and then, then I have three of these, just like that. And well, you actually see I kind of have a problem just like before, it's putting them one on top of the other. And that's because, um, there's this uh, axis, and by default, it's zero. And um, right, so that does the exact same thing that's happening by default. So zero is down, one is over. And so if I convert this to one, well, I would get this little piece here, which I could put into V2 broadcast like that. And then I could peek at that if I wanted to, V2, V2 broadcast. And I see this piece right here. And, um, and so then what's really happening? When I say v1.transpose times v2, it's really taking this matrix here, right? It's transposing, well, it's broadcasting it to that shape, and it's broadcasting this one to this other shape, and then it's drawing, um, uh, what, what happened there? Um, did I not uh, spell that correctly? So let me see. There we go. I must have not run my cell or something. Right, I, what it's doing is it's saying, well, in the top left, I'm going to have four times one. In the middle, I'm going to have five times two, and so on, basically for all nine of these cells, and it works just fine.
So let's talk about some practical um, uh, implications for this. And, and I actually see that I kind of put all of this in the wrong section. Let me let me just do this. And I I did my transposes. I wanted to talk about the broadcasting here. So let me just make a note of this. Broadcasting. For HSI, I have a more orderly notebook. I talk about transposing. I talked about broadcasting. Um, the, the other thing I want to talk about with broadcasting is um, some practical applications. And then what happens if these things are not the same uh, number of dimensions, right? So, so I see that the dimensions are different sizes, but they still both were two-dimensional structures. What happens if I multiply, say, like a three-dimensional structure by a two-dimensional structure? So, so one way I could use this <clears throat> is if I want to have something like, um, you know, a times table. So, you know, let, let me grab some digits here. I'm going to say numpy dot arrange um, digits from you know one to ten, and I'm going to peek at that. And you've all seen these tables where it's like one times one is one, one times two is is two, so on and so forth for every combination of one digit numbers. That's how we probably a lot of us learned um, to multiply things when we were children. And so the one way I could do this, I could say like reshape one comma one negative one. Actually, is that right? I want um, however many rows are necessary in one column. It's like that. And so so I could say uh, digits dot transpose times digits. And now you can see it's kind of going both directions, right? I'm kind of going in this direction from one to nine. And then I'm drawing in this direction from one to nine. And then if I wanted to, I could look um, here, right? When I'm in this cell, what does this mean? I'm multiplying four by three and I get 12, right? Down here, I'm multiplying nine by nine. I get 81. I can create these nice little times tables. Um, another way we can use broadcasting is when we're dealing with images like we were last time. And uh, and so let me just kind of do some, I forgot to do this at the top. Um, from Matt, actually, yeah, from Matt plot lib import pi plot as plt. And um, I could say plt. Dot, maybe I'll just run that first. I can say plt. Dot image read. And I already downloaded a file here called bug.jpg. Same thing we used last time. So we call this bug and peek at it. And uh, and you can see I have all these numbers like before. Uh, I have my red values, my green values, and my blue values. And, uh, and, and, and just a little bit more detail here, how uh, matplotlib deals with these images is for the three colors, it will, um, for colors, it will have, uh, have um, you know, zero to one for floats or It'll have zero to 255 uh, for integers. And so I can see I'm reading this in as integers. I think it'll be a little bit more intuitive if I just divide this by 255 like that and uh, and then use that to show it. So I'm going to say plt.image show. I'm going to show that bug. And that works great. And so I'm going to be using some element wise operations on here. And one of the things that's going to help me is if I make this a little bit smaller. So right now the bug is pretty big, right? It's a it's pretty high uh, uh, high resolution image. And, and so actually one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shrink it down. So I'm gonna say the bug, um, well, I'm gonna take a slice of my bug and so I have like a row slice here, column slice here, and then a channel slice here. Um, I want all my channels. Um, for rows, here's gonna be my slice. I'm only gonna take like every 10th um, row. And then to keep the, the dimensions kind of proportional, I'm going to take every 10th column. So I'm going to do that. And uh, and you can see it's just kind of a grainier image, and that's trying to make my multiplication faster. Right? If I look down here, you know, 10th of the pixels are involved now. OK, great. So um, I said I want to do element-wise operations on it. And, um, and so I can. One, one of the things I could do is I could say something like this. Um, if I say plot.image show, I mean, I can multiply the whole thing by like half and just get a much darker image. Um, what if I wanted to mess around and uh, and make the uh, the red kind of uh, stand out more than the other colors? So if I'm looking at this, I have my bug, which is this shape. And um, 
And what I really want to do is I want to multiply, say, like the red by 1 and then multiply the green and the blue by 0.5 to just kind of really make it look extra red as kind of some sort of special effect. So uh, how could I do that? Well, well, one way is I could try to create a shape where I have a number in each of these things, um, you know, 169 times 253 times 3. Uh, but that would be kind of uh, difficult, right? I mean, that's a lot of... Um, that's a large tensor. But what I'd really like to do is I want to multiply all the reds by one color, all the blues by another color, and so on. And, uh, and NumPy is actually going to make that easy for me. I can create a NumPy array like this, and I can say I want to multiply all the reds by one. Um, I want to multiply all the um, uh, blues by, or all the greens by 0 0.5, and all the blues by that. So, so maybe I'm going to call that my filter, something like that. And uh, I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to put this uh, here. And uh, actually, let me just do this. I'm going to print both of the shapes. So I'm going to print, oh, what happened there? OK, I'm going to print the bug.shape. And I'm going to print the filter.shape. And, uh, and there I go. And so what is, what is um, NumPy going to do? What, what it's going to do is it's going to take this 3. And uh, it's going to start from the end of both of these, right? It's going to pair them up. It's going to say, oh, three matches up with this three. And then what am I going to do about these extra dimensions? I'm just going to create them, right? So, so it's really kind of what I would do is you can imagine doing a reshape where I'm like, um, where I say something like, hey, I want it to end with three. And then on other dimensions, I'll just have one, right? So if I do that, you can see why broadcasting will work here, right? Because a three will match with three. I can stretch from my 1 to 253, and I can stretch from my 1 to 169. I can absolutely do that. Uh, but I don't have to do any reshaping here because it's going to do that automatically for me. It's going to line up the 3 and then kind of just fill in whatever I need for those other dimensions. And so if I want to, right, I can multiply this down here by my filter, and, uh, and I can see that this is a little bit extra red relative to other ones. The blues and the greens um, are more faded now. That's one thing I can do. Um, let me do one more example, which is um, what would happen if I wanted to try to have some sort of fade effect where, um, I, I don't know, I wanted to go from, you know, uh, kind of black on the left, you know, it's kind of all black, and then as I go to the right, I, the image kind of fades in. So I want to create some sort of fade like this. And, uh, and I'll say np.a range and... Um, I'm going from left to right, so I'm kind of dealing with columns, right? I'm going over the columns. So I have this many columns. I can do it something like that. Let me just take a peek at this fade. And, um, and I want it to be from 0 to 1, right? So 0 is completely black. Uh, 1 is the original color. So I'm going to divide this by 253. And I get this nice fade going on. And, of course, the fade is just this one-dimensional thing. And so if I want to do something like this... Um, if I want to say, um, if I want to say like, you know, my bug image times fade, then it's going to line up by the end. So this 253 needs to match up with this, like the three here, and it doesn't. Um, right, the last entry in my fade tensor does not necessarily have to be three. It could also be one because then it's trying to stretch it out for me. And, uh, and so I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to say fade equals fade dot reshape. And I know I have to end in three. And before that, I can put however many I want. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and uh, I'm sorry. I want to have it be one, right? Because of my one can match up with my three. And so this is something that's going to actually let the multiplication work, right? Because I can expand out this one to match the three. Um, and then 253 matches up nicely here. And then, well, it doesn't matter if I have extra dimensions at the beginning. It's trying to assume that those are all filled in with the same thing. It's doing that stretching effect. So I can do that. And the multiplication works. And uh, if I want to say plot.image show, if I try to do that and actually see how the effect works, uh, it works great, right? I mean, it starts black here on the left and then it fades into. Uh, the full color on the right. And if I wanted to reverse that, I mean, I could just say, you know, one minus all this. And then I guess it kind of fades to showing the, the bug on the left and to 
uh, black on the right, right? So it's very powerful, right? I can kind of do this multiplication, but then it actually affects the way that I see um, images. Okay, let's talk about the dot product. So shifting gears a bit here. So I have this V1 here, and I have this V2 here. And um, the most common pattern when I'm doing two uh, um, uh, vectors by each other is that I will have um, basically like a vertical, or I'm sorry, I may have a horizontal vector by a vertical. So, so maybe I'm going to put this a transpose like this, and I want to multiply these two together. And, uh, and I'm just going to do it first, then I'm going to talk about what computation actually happened, right? So I'm going to have V1 transpose times V2. And, uh, and this is going to be very different than what happened when I did the other multiplication together. Maybe let's to kind of have uh, the contrast, let's do it the old way, the element-wise way. And you see I get that big thing. When I do this dot product multiplication, I actually just did a single number, which is 32. So what in the world is going on here? Um, it is doing this. It's, it's taking 1 times 4. So it's taking 1 times 4 plus, and then it's taking the second numbers, 1 times, or I'm sorry, 2 times 5. So 2 times 5. And, uh, and then it's taking the third numbers, 3 times 6 plus 3 times 6. And it's adding them all up. And that's how I end up with just one number. And so maybe if I actually just do this, I'll, I'll kind of prove it's true. Sure enough, I got 32 here, which uh, kind of ignoring the, the shape of it uh, is the same, right? So I'm able to get 32 by that. So, so I use a dot product when I want to add a, a multiply a bunch of pairs of numbers together and, uh, and then add up the result. And there's going to be various use cases where I talk about that. So just like the one last thing I want to talk about here is something that's actually relatively new to Python. It used to be that um, you would always do the dot product with numpy dot dot. And uh, in older versions of Python, that was your only option. In newer versions of Python, they actually use the at symbol for dot. And you get the same thing, right? So, you know, you're going to see a lot of examples in the real world where they're doing this. A newer Python code is probably going to be doing the dot product with the at symbol. So at is dot product for matrices or vectors. All right, so we're gonna be talking more about how we're gonna actually use this in upcoming videos.